Yesterday, a climate rally in Toronto brought together what Joseph Breen of the National Post called an uneasy coalition of Naomi Klein, a professional environmentalist activist, and Jerry Diaz, the head of Canada's largest private sector union called Unifor. Also in attendance was Clayton Thomas Mueller of 350.org, a U.S.-based environmentalist group run by an American named Bill McKibben, funded by the Rockefellers. Now, what about this union of people is so uneasy? Well, Naomi Klein hates the oil sands. She would shut it down. She'd shut down all of the oil sands production. So would 350.org. They're no different. But Jerry Diaz represents, well, he's the voice of hundreds of thousands of Canadian workers in the energy sector, including the oil sands and auto production. So what is this union boss doing slumming with people who destroy the careers of everyone he represents? There are a number of different labor unions in Canada. Some hate all oil. Some just say we don't like Northern Gateway, Kinder Morgan, and Keystone XL because they ship the raw product out of the country. We prefer Line 9 and Energy East, which takes oil from oil sands oil from the west of Canada to the east. Those are our oil sands projects because we get the jobs. That's where Unifor stands. They support Line 9 and they support Energy East, provided they don't export the product. Okay, but surely that's not what your fellow protesters believe. In fact, your fellow protesters are extremely against all pipelines. Let's take Energy East, for example. Naomi Klein and 350.org have actively campaigned against Energy East. What is Energy East? It's a $12 billion project by TransCanada to take energy from the oil sands, from Alberta, through some existing pipelines, but also building new pipelines, to take them all the way to St. John, New Brunswick, where Canada's largest refinery exists. So talk about jobs, construction jobs, refinery jobs, shipping jobs. That refinery in New Brunswick not only serves Atlantic Canada, but also serves northeastern United States. So it's easy to understand why Unifor would support something like this especially the members of Unifor. But beyond this, isn't it bizarre that Jerry Diaz supports producing oil in Alberta and sending it east, but not sending it west or south? Does he oppose sending it west or south because the product is exported or because of global warming? Is he anti-oil sands altogether, or is he only anti-oil sands when the product is refined outside of Canada? And does that mean he thinks refining oil in Canada is good for the economy? Or is he just deciding arbitrarily and on his own terms which pipelines are good and which are bad? Regardless, there is no doubt that the folks at yesterday's rally did not have the interests of Unifor workers in mind. What would those workers think of their boss speaking at a rally where everyone in attendance would have them put out of work? There may be some Unifor workers who wind up building solar panels or wind turbines. But it will never come close to the numbers who work in oil, gas, pipelines, shipping, trains, ports. It will never come close. We know what Naomi Klein and 350.org were doing at yesterday's climate rally. They're professional activists. But what's Mr. Diaz's excuse? For the Rebel.media, I'm Marissa Semke.